Okay, I think I might be live now. I'm not sure, <laughs> so I'm very scared. Let me know if I'm live. It doesn't even say there's anybody here yet. I'm so nervous. Okay, whether or not there's anybody here yet, I'm going to get started. <laughs> Okay, so I'm here and I'm live, so I'm filling up, this was actually my water for drinking but I was so nervous and scared about this that I actually <laughs> forgot to fill up my own water bottle so we're sacrificing my water bottle as a paint can. Um, okay, so we're going to paint. Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I feel so weird painting in like real life in front of people. Um, as per usual, I'm going to be using all of my same, I was going to say ingredients, paints and materials as I do always. This is my crusty paint palette, crusty and trusty paint palette. So um, I'm going to do four studies. I am thinking, I don't know how big I want to go with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate out my what's the word for it like the panels for each of them <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe I'll do like four decently large panels or something like that I think a lot of them are portrait though so I'm tempted to uh, hmm. let's see I'm gonna split this up anyways for now you know what I might just turn it this way and then I think that's the most I was going to say sensible way of doing it, but maybe not. My sketchbook is like really bumped up, so I'm going to... Oh no, maybe I'm not actually. <laughs> I'm so nervous, I feel so dumb. Um, oh, oh my god, wait. Is there a chat? Oh my god, hello! <laughs> I'm so happy there's somebody here, hello! La Ladonna, is that how I pronounce your name? Please do let me know if I'm pronouncing your name terribly. Oh no, I washed my crusty palette a few days ago and I, because when it gets too crusty, all of my paint starts going like just a shade of like gray brown and then it, it kind of gets all icky and stuff like that. So I have to wash it every now and again, but it's kind of freshly washed right now. So I'm happy that it's freshly washed. Hello, Mirelle and Sarah. Hi. <laughs> this is so scary. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I'm taping up my paper so that I'm doing these like four mini studies so that like I get like four nice portraits at the end of it. And people always ask me what washi tape I use. This is like random cheap washi tape from um, Amazon. So it's not it's nothing special it's not fancy or anything like that so that's what I use because I think the cheaper washi tape is almost better because it's less sticky or something um, so I'm just gonna separate all these out and I'm gonna be sharing the reference images on screen as well so don't worry if you don't have them brought up yourself let me know if you're gonna if you're painting alongside me with this I think it'd be fun. I'm gonna these are gonna be like quick, not very in-depth paintings at all. <laughs> it's actually a really nice sunny day here today, so I there might be, you know, lighting issues <laughs> slightly. Okay. And I'm going to place this one up here. My mic, okay, I'm gonna adjust my mic so that this lays flat. Okay. And an approximation of the center. That seems sort of centered. Okay. okay, yay. And then when we like lift up this later on, it's gonna be all nice and neat and for nice neat squares okay that's a little bit off center there but i'm not bothered trying to change it <laughs> um okie dokie let's see now 
I'm going to bring up the image that we're doing first on the side here. So this is image number one that we're going to be painting today. Let me see if I can make it. Can I make it bigger? Oh, did I make that bigger? Oh, no, I didn't. Here we go. Now, yeah. That is image number one that we're painting today. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I feel so silly. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, so, okay, I got my water and what my plan here is, is to, this is how I tend to do like my quick studies is that I'll lay down the first wash, go on to the next painting, lay down the next wash, one, two, three, four. And then I'll go in and do maybe a little bit more details, maybe a little more details, details. So I'll like do a cycle. And then by the time I'm done this one, this one will be dry and ready for like the next layer or whatever. And then by the time I get down to like pencils and pastels and stuff, you know, it should be dry. So that's how I kind of run these in a time efficient manner. Like that's probably, there's probably a better way of doing it than the way I do it. I'm going to adjust my mic so maybe you can hear me better. I'm nervous that you won't be able to hear me better. There we go. There's so much wires everywhere. Oh, let's see. Oh my God, you just saw my nose. That's disgusting. <laughs> okay. Now, we got our paint. Uh, I'm wondering, should I lay down no, I was considering putting down more white, but I don't think I will. I'm going to flip my palette this way as well so you can see me mixing a little bit better. And then we have my classic crusty towel. It's so lovely. God, I love crusty things. <laughs> um, so we, oh, I didn't say as well. This is the Royal Talons Art Creation Sketchbook. It's like the sketchbook I've been using forever. So for brushes... These are, I meant to feel like I've mentioned these in every single video ever. It is the Richard Oliver Ireland 10 round and a half inch flat. Um, let me, hold on, there we go. I changed my chat to live chat to make sure there was like, I wasn't missing out on messages. I was afraid I was missing out on messages. Let me move this down. Okay, I'm gonna be down more. Okay, now. Let's go get started! Yay! I'm gonna start up here and then move down a clockwise way. So I think I'm gonna start. I'm actually gonna use my crustier version of this brush because I'm just laying down a flat wash and I want to preserve how pristine this brush is. I'm scared of using like nice new brushes for some reason. So let's get started in with some water. And I think we're gonna lay down probably try and do that gradient that we see in the sky so from a light sort of a blue and then down into pinks and then deeper purpley blues so we're gonna just take some of this these blues that we already have mixed up here they're like almost it's almost a greeny blue and I'm going to lay this down just like this Oh, I'm so freaked out every time you can see my nose. I have a big spot on it now. Hold on, wait, can you see? If I go in here like this, you can see the big spot there. So <laughs> I'm like afraid you'll see my, I'll be outed for having terrible skin. Um, I'm just making sure my part, I asked my partner to like, um, watch this for me for the first few minutes to make sure I wasn't doing anything terribly wrong. <laughs> And he said it all looked okay. So I was just making sure he didn't send me anything else. So we're going to go in with a very light pink. This is These are all either Holbein or Windsor Newton gouache. And this is a mix of opera and white. So I'm going to wet my brush more. And from looking again at that, I see there is... Ooh, I have no yellow on my palette. Hold on, I got no yellow. Oh, so yellow is Windsor Newton designer squash in permanent yellow deep. It's my go-to yellow. It's a lovely warm yellow. So there's slightly, this is too cool. I feel like there's definitely like a warmer shade of pink. 
So I'm going to mix the two of them together and I'm watering this down like by a lot. I have a feeling you might be able to hear some animals complaining because I have them locked out of this room now. <laughs> and normally they're allowed like free reign of the whole house so they're all probably very very upset that I have them locked out. Okay, now I'm going to mix the pink with some of this smalt blue and that'll give us this lovely deeper pink and this is going to up the gradient a little bit more. And then we're going to go really deep on it. We're just going to go nearly plain straight in with the small blue. Oh, what is this? It's a piece of rubber. And the two of them mixed together really do give that lovely, like the same shade as this. I feel like small blue is like my new favorite color of paint <laughs> i don't know why i just love it so much okay that's the gradient so we're going to let that dry and we're going to move on to the second one i'm using obs my partner told me to use obs and it's really it's really really useful for um okay that's not it I'm trying to figure out Loads of different layers of like things. Here we go. We're making that bigger there. I feel like I'm totally like technologically illiterate here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's it. So this is a scene from the top of Diamond Hill in Connemara. And I just thought it was really, really pretty. Um, if you're ever about in Connemara, Diamond Hill is a lovely like hike to do. It takes about like three hours if you're of like average fitness level I'd say I'm pretty average fitness level and I find it pretty useful I'm just putting more burnt umber on my pay, pay palette for the browns and stuff that you can see in this so this is again whole bean gouache in burnt umber so I'm just going to squish it down and I'm probably going to mix burnt umber green and yellow uh, to try and get like the shades that you see here of like the grass oh my god thank you so much cradles cradles or cradles i feel like i'm doing a great job of pronouncing everybody's names wrong <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> i'm really glad that i can like help teach people things because i feel like i am not very good at explaining my process and that the best i can probably do is just show people how i do things um so I'm just mixing up this brown with a bit of orange and I'm going to take a little bit of yellow as well. Throw that in there and then also mix in some greens. I want to make it brighter. I feel like it's too dark now. Um, okay, let's see. I'm, I feel like I could do with even more green again. So I'm just going to re-wet what is here and throw that in there. So we'll see how this shows up on the I was gonna go down here um okay now I need to I'm, what I do now is I sketch out with my paint the colors because I want to leave sort of negative space for the like rocks and stuff that you see so I suppose down here we see now these are all like approximations of rocks as well don't don't expect any realistic rock images from me um you know who actually has a really good tutorial, like exclusively on how to paint like rocks and stones is, do you know that artist Justin Donaldson? He does really like realistic, like landscapes in, I don't think it's, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm really, really glad. Um, oh, why is there like a massive dislike button on my screen? What is this? Oh no, I don't know if that's like somebody like sent in a dislike sticker or something. I can see it on my screen, but I can't get rid of it. Oh no, has like my image stopped? What is this? Um, hold on one second. Has my 
streaming stopped? Has my camera stopped? I don't think it has. Hmm. Da -da -da. Hold on. Huh. What is up with that? Hold on. My camera feed has stopped for some reason. Hold on. We're going to plug this out. And then we're going to plug it back in and see if that has done anything. Ugh. This is such a disaster. Okay, oh, sorry about that. My like internet just decided to stop for a second. But I think, I think we're back. Like a huge like thumbs down bubble appeared on the screen and I was like, no, I just like, I thought it was like some sort of like massive dislike button that someone managed to put in there. But I think it was just my system telling me that there was some sort of connection issue. So let's hope that doesn't happen again. <laughs> Um, what was I saying before this? Oh yeah, I was saying uh, if you want like a really good tutorial for how to paint like rocks and stuff, Justin Don Justin Donaldson art. Thank you, thank you for letting me know. It's okay now. I was really worried that I had managed to mess up my very first stream. Um, he does really realistic paintings in not gouache. I think he actually uses like poster color, but. I've used poster color before and it is very similar to gouache and um, he does really good tutorials on kind of how to like realistically paint rocks and he explains them so well. I like downloaded his like, what was it? I don't know, was it like a landscape painting course or what it was a few years ago? Um, this was like way back in like 2020 or something like that and it was really, really good in depth course on how to like yeah paint landscapes and just kind of like understanding how light hits certain things and rocks and stuff um so it was it's a pretty good course i would definitely recommend it if you want to learn how to paint landscapes in a probably a way that's like infinitely better taught than how i would teach them <laughs> um so how are you all today is it what's the weather like where you are now we've had a really weird week of weather here in ireland so it was like fairly mild and sunny and stuff like that well sunny and rainy it's always rainy here but then randomly on like friday the country got like a load of snow and we rarely get snow here anymore we used to get it more a few years ago but you know global warming and whatnot don't get it as much but we got like a ton of snow throughout the country, especially like more up northerly. Um, and now it's back to like um, back to like um, wet and sunny. I'm talking uh, Justin Donaldson. I'll type his name in because I feel like I'm probably definitely not saying it right. Justin Donaldson. Um, and yeah, he does like, he does really cool ones, like gouache paintings of like, um, lo scenes from like Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. Oh, they're so cool. He does really cool ones of like Zelda as well. It's like, oh, his work is really, he's really, really skilled at what he does, I think. Our styles aren't similar at all, I would say, just in that we both use sort of similar 
types of paints. I don't really understand what the difference is between poster colour and like gouache. Um, because I've used poster colour before and it, it seems really similar to gouache. But yeah, I feel like I'm just going on a million different ramblings. I was like, they're talking about wet the weather and now I'm talking back about the same guy again. <laughs> so what stopped me from talking crap? Um, yeah, I was really afraid that I would have to cancel this live stream because yesterday, you probably saw, if you saw my Instagram stories, my cat ate uh, an Easter egg. I still can't believe that he ate an Easter egg. That's so wild. Um, I had like a little white chocolate Easter egg beside my desk here actually and I was like just I, I think I was like kind of working a bit late and I was like oh, well, um, I'll save this for tomorrow I ate like half of it and I was like I'll save it for tomorrow and just put it in the drawer here and I like specifically shoved it like a way back in the drawer so that the cat wouldn't be able to get to it and he saw me putting it into the drawer and I'm convinced it's because he saw me do it that he was like I'm going to get that Easter egg. She doesn't want me to have it. Oh, is that the difference? That they're more dense? Okay. That probably does make more sense because they're used. I think that poster colours are what they use in the backgrounds of like Ghibli films and stuff. And they're so stunning, like the works in Ghibli films. Uh, Ghibli or Ghibli? Maybe I'm saying it wrong. I always call it Ghibli, but I think that's the wrong way. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, okay. Can you see how terrible my initial paintings look? Like they, they look like they're not very good at all because they're just these like initial layers of paintings. and then more of that kind of light colour for the lakes and stuff probably these are essentially like <laughs> thank you for thinking it's not terrible I'm, a, I'm definitely incredibly harsh at myself imagine if I went up to someone and I saw their initial painting and I was like that's terrible it's like it's I, I'm so mean in how I speak to myself and then I would never ever say that to anybody else. I would be like, no, you're doing a great job, stop. And then I see my own work and I'm like, that's crap. You're an awful artist. <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's like what you say to yourself is so different than what you'd probably say to other people. Um, okay, I think I want to make this area a little bit darker and more brownie. So, cause there's like forestry there, you can see close by the lake. And then there's just kind of like patches where the sun's hitting. So I kind of want to show that. But yeah, these are like essentially sketches of what my painting will eventually look like. Okay, so that's number one. And then we will hide that one. I did manage to prepare these in advance, which I'm proud of. My, not my paintings. Thank you. Freedom is a good description of it. It's very loose, I find. I just like having fun with my paintings, I feel like. And I, I like not taking what I do too seriously as well. I feel like if you, if I, when I try to paint, with the intention of making it absolutely perfect it always backfires on me for some reason and it always works a lot better when I just try and have a bit of fun with it and just enjoy like just enjoy playing with colors and scribbling um so this one is from just literally like two minutes down the road from me walking <laughs> this is like my neighbor's field and that's their little calves from last um last summer. I took this photo while I was walking my doggy. She loves seeing the um she loves seeing cows. But like the cow cows are like quite curious. Um 
they're like big dogs i find cows and uh they'll always come over and they'll try and investigate my dog but she's a big wimp and she loves to watch them but as soon as they start watching her and as soon as they get curious about her she um she freaks out and runs away so this was one of those moments where she watched them from afar and they watched her from afar because I'd say this is like the mother cow and wasn't too keen on a dog being there, especially because my dog is quite big. Um, oh, do you mean you have like troubles kind of keeping loose and staying sort of free in your art? Is it Kratos? I... I do watch you. I, I have that problem as well sometimes. And I really do think the only solution is to go in with no, no expectations. Like when you're a child and you paint, you know, you're not trying to be really good or perfect. You're just trying to, you're just having fun. And I feel like it's a thing that when we're adults, we really forget that that's what things are about in life. That it is just about having a good time and enjoying what you do um as opposed to trying to make it perfect and then through the art through the like practice of doing things frequently that's when you'll end up kind of gaining skills through like constant repetition and stuff like that i feel Ooh, large seals belugas you have like whales and stuff oh that is cool we get seals here as well i think like we do get whales but they're very like they don't often come close um where are you from we uh we get seals but i very rarely see them alive usually i end up encountering them when they're like washed up on a beach it's a uh, pretty grim but such is the life of the ocean i guess things die but um occasionally you'll see living seals as well i don't want to imply that like all the seals in Ireland are just like dead for some reason <laughs> that'd be really sad um so yeah and just laying in the colors here and going in flat with everything if you have any questions about any of the materials or anything I'm using feel free to ask but they're usually all the exact same here's the little house that we're putting in look at him being a little house We'll make the, I was going to say ceiling, roof, roof, we'll make the roof. It's not actually a house, it's a shed. That'd be a pretty sad house to live in. You do often actually see though that sometimes these old sheds will get renovated. We have an old stone shed in our house as well. Oh, I'm not going to try and pronounce that place name. Vla no, I'm not going to try and pronounce it because I'll pronounce it wrong. <laughs> um, that sounds like a really cool place to be. Is it really cold there right now? I imagine it, it sounds like it would get cold, especially like, oh, the breeze from the sea coming over. Ooh, chilly. I'm just envis envis envisaging a really cold place. Um, my friend moved to Japan recently. Um... And I miss him, but he's, I think he's having a good time over there. Very jealous. We're going to Japan on part of our honeymoon, actually. I'm sorry, you're clearly not from Japan, but I just saw a Japanese sea and I was like, ah, oh, Japan. <laughs> so you're, it looks like it's Russia. No, near China and Japanese sea. That sounds cool, though. So different. It's, um... It's like really cool when you like think about where you're used to living and what I'm so used to seeing every day. People like will consider it so cool and beautiful. But then like I'm hearing about like where you live and I'm like, wow, that sounds so cool and beautiful. Like I think it's really easy for us to get so used to our own surroundings and forget how gorgeous the places where we live are. Yay, I was right in the <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> Uh, okay, these are more darker greens, so we're gonna we're gonna go heavy here on this. Don't judge how wonky this house looks right now. 
it will improve with time. These are just sort of quick studies because I don't want to um, like go crazy into details because I'll be here forever and a day. So let's paint in these cows. Okay, so they're kind of a light brown. There's clearly a filter over this image, so it's probably not what their real colors were, but uh, orangey and a bit of yellow. I feel like if the paint is too wet underneath these like extra layers won't sort of show through, if that makes sense. Look at him. There she, I was going to say him. It's, it's clearly a she. If these are her babies. I don't think the dad car would be too friendly. Definitely not friendly enough for my dog. <laughs> and his, her leg goes back. And then we have another one there. And then... We have like apple trees in the back of our garden. And when <laughs> when the farmers put cows in the field that like is close to our back garden, uh, the cows always come and they steal all the apple um they steal all the apples from our apple trees. And I get really annoyed because like I use those apples and I like using them. And I'm really mad at the cows whenever they come and steal all of our apples. So I'm like, no, those are my apples. But then sometimes when it's like um in the autumn when the apples get like when they start falling down, then I will I will give the cows the apples <laughs> as like a an apology for getting mad at them earlier on in the year. <laughs> The way I use different materials push you to experiment more. Oh, really? That's really good. I'm so glad. Um, what have you started experimenting with and stuff like that? Because I am really, really curious, like, what you experimented with. I'm always really flattered when people say, like, I inspired them to, like, try different things and to, like, do different practices and stuff. Because I... I feel like sometimes I'm not a very inspiring person. <laughs> That's probably a bit, again, this is me being mean to myself for no reason. I would never say I think someone else is inspiring, but um, I'm always really like, ah, I'm very chuffed when I hear that like I inspire people. Here's this little baby cow. He's not showing up very well now, but he will show up well later. And then this other one is a very similar color to its mother, but it's a bit more red. So we're gonna, we'll throw in some of this orange here. Um, and then you. Please do not come to me looking for realistic images of cows. <laughs> I am clearly not a pro at cows. Cheaper, easier, because they're just blobs of legs. And then cows, you have to give a little bit of form to. <laughs> okay. That is our first one. I'm wondering... Should I close the blind? Maybe not. Maybe not right now. Okay. That is image number three. And then we go on to image number four. And this is... If you are ever... Oh. I had it selected and then I deselected it. Here we go. Make it bigger. This is where I take my doggy for a walk fairly often. Um, it's a really gorgeous area. If you're ever in Galway or Mayo or just the west of Ireland in general, I would definitely recommend you visit here. It is called... Ugh. Ashford Castle is like a big landmark near there, but this area itself, the village is called Kong. Um, think like King Kong, but with a C instead of a K. <laughs> and it's a really, really gorgeous village and it has this lovely woodland near it. And it's always just so stunning and beautiful. It gets quite busy with tourists in the summer, so be prepared if you wish to also be a tourist in the summer there. Yeah, it is stunning. It's a really gorgeous place. Um, 
and you can like walk around in the woods for ages and there's so many different paths to take and it's really pretty it's very much if you're like imagining a quaint irish village this is what kong is <laughs> it's very much it leans into that kind of stereotype of what an irish village I have to leave now, sorry, thank you so much. Don't apologize, thank you so much for coming. I'm so glad you were here. And I'll be posting these, and I think this live should hopefully save. I'm not sure, I hope it does. But if it doesn't, thank you so much for being here, Morel. And I'm so glad you came along. <laughs> um, okay, so that's our base. And there, we're gonna go on to the sky. So there's a bit of a gap there and then we're going to go here and I think I maybe want to, do you see there's like a slight pinkiness to the sky. So I'm going to throw in a little bit of pink there, like a very slight pink. It just gives you the impression. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm genuinely, I was really, really afraid when I started this live stream that nobody would show. So the fact that I'm so glad people came, <laughs> I was really afraid I would be on this live stream and I would be talking to myself really awkwardly and there'd be nobody on the chat or anything. Uh, but no, there is. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm just, this is so, it's so nerve wracking. I don't mind making videos, but like, I feel like when I do when I edit down the videos that I make, I'm like, oh my god, I say so much stupid things. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you're curious about more history of Kong, this place, it uh, there was like a, a famous old film that was made there, or like a movie. Um, I get told the way I say film is weird because of my country accent. <laughs> film. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to other people, I feel like. Feel um, There's like, yeah, it was like a famous old kind of like, I think it was like what would be considered a rom-com back in the days. It's called The Quiet Man. And it's a really sort of like silly movie, but um, it was filmed in Kong. And so that's why I think um, the sort of village of Kong really leans into sort of traditional Irish vibes quite a lot because they get a lot of tourism from the fact that that film was made there. So yeah, if you want to see Kong through the lens of an old film, you can watch that. I don't think it's all that great, to be honest, so I wouldn't bother. <laughs> it's really, it's really silly. I don't know did it win an Oscar at the time, but it's quite an old film. Um, but yes, it's very much, I think it was to do with like a, a matchmaker or something like that. And it was like a handsome American man came to this rural Irish town and wooed the lady who lived there or something. Um, very much generic, silly, but fun. Okay, so this is where I'm going to try and add in a little bit more contrast just blobs of where I see darker and to try and give the impression that this is a reflection and this is the actual like you know bank do you have any like Sunday traditions you do on Sundays I always try to keep my Sundays as like days off obviously this is like technically work but I don't really mind it in this case but um after this I'm probably going to I'm torn between doing some gardening because it's actually a nice day and we really rarely get nice days I'm going to close this blind beside me because I'm going to start working on this piece and obviously the sun is in the way so give me a second and I'll close it um, have to figure out there's so many windows oh here we go that's better so yeah, I usually try and keep my Sundays as like days off. And then just try and like chill and do nice things. So that's the base layer for that fourth image. So we're gonna go back to 
this one again. And I'm probably just going to do two layers of paint on each and then pencils on top at the very end. Thank you so much, Kratos. I'm so glad you're here. And thank you so much for all the chats. And I'm now envisaging lovely, like, seaside towns in Russia. And I want to paint that now. <laughs> I'm going to Google it after this. Maybe I'll paint some of it. But um, thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. And there definitely will be more streams because this didn't go nearly as terribly as I expected it to, apart from the minor technical hip hiccup. So thank you so much and have a lovely rest of your day. I'll see you. Um, so what do I want to do now? I want to paint more of these kind of purpley clouds. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to mix in some of the pink with the blue and some of the white. And yeah, we're going to go, oh yeah, that's like exactly what I wanted. <gasps> that's turned out so pretty. I love these kind of colours so much. It reminds me of like, did you see me sharing the the jumper that I'm currently knitting? Oh, that wool that I got for it is so gorgeous. I'm literally, I'm so obsessed with it. I'm really enjoying <clears throat> knitting it because... I just love looking at the wool as I knit it. It's just like, ah, it's so pretty. Uh, okay. I'm really trying to capture the, hmm. I think I need to put out some more small blue. Oh, there you go, you're getting a good soot sprite in your face. <laughs> I have my cats tattooed on my arm because I am a crazy cat lady. So I'm going to go in with more of the small blue because I want to now make these a little bit sort of darker, especially for the contrast of the mountains. I want the mountains to be in like a pure small blue kind of color. They're actually a little bit slightly bluer than that, but I, I just want to go for the small blue because I love it so much. I'm probably going to ignore the like shades and stuff that you can see. I'm not really too bothered about including them in this. Okay. Da -da. These are maybe a little bit more bluer. I'm kind of taking creative liberties with the clouds. <laughs> what is painting if not taking creative liberties you know i'm also going to go in with more pinks just for the fun of it because you don't want you don't have to make things realistic all the time you could just have fun with them now i'm going to do the moon so the moon is a very pale golden color so i'm going to take some of this i'm also going to take some of this yellow mix that in a little bit more we'll see that's just peeping out behind okay no you're too dark i want to make this lighter if i can very very pale yellow let's try again hmm okay you know what we're going to go straight in with this yellow instead that probably gives it better Sometimes when you try to do realistic, it just doesn't work. There we go. Now we're going to go in with, we're going to do these bushes. These are my neighbor's bushes. So we're going to, and they're kind of like a nice yellowy green, which I really enjoy. Okay, so. I want to make these a little bit brighter. I'm also going to add in more of the green. This is my go-to green and it is olive green in Windsor Newton gouache. This is like the green that I use for all of my works and I always have like a million backups of it. 
because I'm always really afraid. What if I run out of it when I need it most? When <laughs> the world needed it most? <laughs> you vanish. We um, tried watching the remake of The Avatar and it was okay. I thought it was okay. I watched the first episode and I don't know if I'm going to watch the next episodes or not. It takes a lot for me to get into like a TV show. So like most of the time I'm just like watching video essays on YouTube or listening to audiobooks. <clears throat> Very rarely am I like watching TV shows. So I'm going to go in and make the green really dark down here just for a bit of contrast. And you can see when I'm like painting from like a reference image I'm not I don't do it one for one. In these studies maybe I do it a little bit more faithfully but I find for the most part I'm just like whatever I feel like doing sort of like I'll leave out things that I'm not interested in painting and I'll add in things that I am interested in painting and you know if a reference can just be a guide or like an inspiration it doesn't have to be uh, like a one-to-one -one actual thing unless you're like a realistic painter but maybe you are I was about to say if you're here you're probably not but maybe you like to explore different styles so I'm going to add in some like whites here because I feel like there's not these are just a bit too dark so I'm going to add in lighter colors the thing about gouache though is that it always dries a little bit darker so I feel like sometimes you have to go like really intense with the light colors to really get them And then we'll do scribbles because would it really be a painting for me if there was no scribbles? I believe not. Okay, so that's the second layer done on this one. So I'm going to go and we're going to go into the next layer of the next one. Oh my God, I can't believe I've been here almost an hour. That's crazy. I'm going to share this actually on Instagram because I feel like... I forgot to do that. Let me see. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on one second till I get my link for this. Um, copy link. Hold on. How many times can I say hold on? I'll take a nice photo of this. Okay, and where's this <laughs> link? There we go. Paste. Live stream done. Your story share. Okay. okay. Now, so back to this one. I dripped some water on it here. I think when I was mixing colors. <clears throat> okay. So what I want to do here is to, I'm, the rocks I'm probably going to leave as is because I can go over them with like pencils to make them look more like rocks. But what I want to do is I want to darken up these areas and also some of the grasses as well. So I already have some of these like deep greens mixed. So I think I'm probably going to um, add in them here. Or no, the deep greens would be really good for this forestry that we see in the distance. So I'm going to add in these. Here we go. That's kind of better. That's what I wanted more for the deeper contrast. Sorry if you can hear like a little noise. That's my elbow on the table. <laughs> Thank you. I presume you meant good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like these are so food. And I was like, is that is that a slang term I'm not aware of? 
I was like, oh no, I'm not one of the cool kids anymore. I don't know the cool words. But no, yes, good makes way more sense. And I'm glad I'm not missing out on the cool slang term. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you think they're good, especially because they're only like half finished. I was really afraid that like when people jump in on the stream, they would see it and be like, oh my God, this girl is terrible at art. <laughs> she's a, she's lying to us all. Using AI generated images. Oh, imagine. Um, that'd be a quick way to uh, kill my art career if I pivoted to AI. <laughs> um, okay, we'll make these darker again. Oh, I'm running out of my dark shades here. Hold on, we'll make these ones really dark. I want to have a load of contrast in the mountains in the back. And these ones. Okay, and then there's sort of lighter browny, greeny shades here for this side of the mountain. Um, when I was doing this hike with my dog, she uh, it was the first time I did any sort of a hike with her. Because with like Brownie's mountain dogs, you have to wait until they're a little bit older so their joints are fully developed so you don't like, you know, mess up their growth plates or whatever. And um, she's finally old enough that she can go on these like longer hikes with me and stuff. And uh, I, I did a bit of a, just like when you go down, like this image is of the peak of the mountain. And then, you know, there's like a long kind of steep hill downwards, but it's really rocky. And she got really excited at one point and like she's a huge, like 40 kilo dog. And uh, she like pulled me and I like half like slipped down the side of the mountain. I was like, oh, my God, if this is how I die, it's going to be so embarrassing. Um, but no, it was fine. I uh, I did twist my knee, though. and I was really afraid for a second. I was like, oh, my God, no, this is even worse than dying. It's more embarrassing than that. Um, I was really afraid that I was going to have to like, call someone for help to like get me down because my dog pulled me down a mountain. Uh, but it was fine. I like sat there for two seconds and then I got back up and I had some stern words with her to not get so excited next time and to not yeet me down a mountain. <laughs> and the worst thing was is there was loads of other people on the trail at the time as well and they all just kind of looked at me like I was an idiot. I was like, oh my god, no, I am an idiot. <laughs> Nobody offered me help though, which I was kind of surprised at. But at the same time, I was glad because I would have been even more mortified if somebody had like offered me help. I would have been like, no, I'm a strong girl with a stronger dog. I don't need help. <laughs> okay, so this is starting to look vaguely like the image. I've obviously gone more greener for the uh, background. Not the background. Yes, the background, the like mountains up here and stuff. I'm going to make this lake a deeper shade, though, just for the fun of it. I feel like with all of my paintings, I like in my brain up the saturation of it, if that makes sense. Like I never really go full on realistic with my paintings. Oh, no, we dropped there for a second happened earlier and now at least I'm confident in what I need to do <laughs> okay I think I think maybe I might be done with this one maybe I'll add in a few little lighter pops of color like you see where these like patches of sun are hitting here in the distance will that make sense if I add them in Yeah, we'll throw them in there. And then a few scribbles. Huh. Hold on. I'm seeing what this is like. Okay, I think that should, hopefully, hmm, sorry, it's giving me like an error message saying that like, oh, there's like not enough connectivity, so I'm going to hope that that resolves itself. 
it says that you might experience some buffering so i hope that if you do have any buffering it resolves pretty quickly because i can't go and reset my router now or else my live stream will just like drop off i actually have good internet so i'm surprised that it's telling me that okay the message went away so we're safe now um okay i feel like that's painting number two the second layer done so i'm going to move on to painting number three and the second layer i feel like with each layer it goes from kind of like suspicious blobs to more or less suspicious blobs <laughs> Um, okay, I think, what do I want to do first here? I feel like I'm happy with the sky. These I can probably tease out with pencils. I might go in and add more details to our little stone wall here. So, let's mix a grey. If you were on my um, Patreon and saw my colour guide, you will have seen my like secret tips for <laughs> mixing like greys and blacks and it's usually like a dark brown and a dark blue um that are kind of like on the opposite ends of the color wheel so that's my secret tips for blacks because you know if it's um if it's if you mix two what are they called complementary colors together you do end up getting what is basically kind of a browny grey so obviously if you just darken that up you get something that's really close to a black so that's a my one useful piece of information for you all today you can now go and you can tell people that you were educated on this lovely sunday afternoon or morning it's morning here and it's getting close to afternoon though two minutes past 11 what time is it where you are I hope it's not like the middle of the night. I did host a poll on my Patreon to see which hours suited people best because like obviously with an international audience you're never gonna suit everyone and I also can't get up in the middle of the night and do paintings. That's also not just kind of realistic for actually like having nice, I need like nice natural daylight for paintings to be fair. So we're going to just mix up a load of greens and go wild here. We're going to pretend that there's some stuff in the foreground here. It's another wonderful benefit of making art is that you can just make up compositions when they suit you better. Because like if you look here at this, um, this like section here in the actual photo, it's so blank and boring. I feel like it'd be more fun to have like interesting little bushes or something <laughs> for lack of a better word interesting bushes <laughs> they cure all life's problems oh lynn thank you so much i'm really really glad you could make it as well i'm so i'm so happy to like provide this <laughs> i was really afraid that people would hate the live streams and think oh god this woman is insufferable <laughs> but um I'm so glad that you'd like my method of thinking because it does, in it, in one way, it does come naturally to me. I don't want to deny that because I think that would be a bit disingenuous of me. But in other ways, I kind of had to develop it nearly because I only started really painting like this in, I would say, like 2019, 2020. That's like as, as like... Before that, I would do far more like intricate drawings and stuff like that. I would actually not often paint like this. So it really was something I had to kind of develop. And I really like, I find myself, I'm not successful when I'm really um, tight in my work. And so, yeah, I had to just like give it a go at like, being a bit looser and I, I I was saying this earlier on in the stream as well is that like not caring you really have to stop like putting pressure on yourself and caring about your artwork um so in a sense it comes naturally to me because I kind of forced it to come naturally in a sense <laughs> like through consciously trying to not think about it 
it started to come more naturally to me if that makes sense you know that doesn't make any sense never mind <laughs> this is the part where you're all like oh my god she's a terrible teacher she doesn't know what she's talking about um no but thank you i'm very very glad that you like to see this i'm i'm always like astonished that people like to see my processes because i feel like there's not a lot of like good explanations I can give for what my process is other than vibes which is a terrible terrible explanation of a process we vibing okay we're going to kind of orangey with this with this guy oh I like that shade actually that's a good shade good shade for good cows do 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 it's we're coming into lambing season here. Well, my neighbors, I have neighbors either side of me and they're all farmers. I have oh, I live in a farming area. <laughs> in case this isn't clear from me painting cows. Um but yeah, I live in like a kind of a farming area and I have like a neighbor this side and a neighbor this side and then we're in the middle. My neighbor this side, they start their lambing really early like in January and stuff, but our house doesn't border much of their like actual fields or anything so we don't see much of the lambs but then the neighbors on this side of us they'll start their lambing pretty soon like march april is when their lambs really come in and uh soon there'll be little lambs like right outside my window hopping along and being ridiculously cute oh i love lambing season but my neighbors obviously hate it because it means they're up at like all hours of the night helping these sheep give birth <laughs> it's like whenever I talk to like my neighbor and she's like they're in their 70s our neighbors as well so it's like can't be easy on them <laughs> um okay I think we're done with the second base layer of this one and we're going to move on to number four I don't know is there much of number four that I need to add probably like the leaves and the shadows of the leaves is probably what I'm going to add here so I'm going to go in with more of my dark brownie greens. I'm actually running pretty low on them here. I might need to squeeze out more. And for these, I'm going kind of scratchy because obviously if we were to paint every individual leaf, we would be here for the next billion years. We don't want that. So what we want to do is I'm going to kind of, I'm going in here like semi dry brushing and that way you can tell that obviously there's like something here in the canopy. And then I'm going to do the exact same but make it slightly bluer for the bottom. You can see here, especially, oh, okay, that's too wet. I'm definitely going to have to squeeze out more of my dark blue. I'm just going to dry it off a little bit as well. Okay, and now let us go in with some lighter colours as well to like brighten up this canopy here. You can kind of see there is some like pops of lighter shades and we'll do some like of these darker greens as well. And I think I'm going to go in with, shocker, small blue. <laughs> Here to like fancy up everything. I am, um, oh yeah, that added a nice little something, something. And then a kind of dry brushing here as well. And you might think this looks terrible now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with this brush and sort of blend it out a little bit. And now that looks a bit more like water and less like blobs. This is what we want to do. We want to go from blobs to recognisable things. <laughs> okay, I think we're done with the painting aspect of it. So I'm going to quickly 
clear away my palette and everything and then we'll bring down my pencils i'll open up my pastel drawer i have like drawers like right here beside me and i keep all my pastels just in one drawer so it's really easy for me to like access everything so i'm going to throw all my things away really quickly not throw them away imagine imagine if i dumped my paint after every time i painted <laughs> just, just like take a big handful and just throw it in the bin <laughs> it would be so bad Oh, I forget when I have my tripod set up here that I can't open the drawer where I keep my actual like, paint palette and put it away. Okay, so I'm gonna take these and put them away. Sorry for how squeaky my chair is. It's absolutely like shocking how squeaky it is. So I'm just gonna take down all of my pencils. Give you. have them all scattered around me. Okay, now back to painting number one to finish that one off. So let's bring up our reference again. Are any of you painting along? Please do let me know if you're painting along or tag me after this if you are painting. If you go to my Patreon, these images are accessible for free. So like, don't think that you need to be signed up to my Patreon to get these. What I said what like what we said for our patreons is that this would be a freebie first stream and we would see where we go from there like if, if people enjoyed it if they hated it if nobody showed up <laughs> what would we do <laughs> so this like is a test run basically and i think it's going pretty well and i haven't messed up technically too many times <laughs> So I think from going forward, we'll probably have a stream once a month on the Woodland Wardens tier. So that's like where all this is stemming from. I'm definitely going to get paint on my... Look, I already have paint on my forearm. If you see bruises on my forearm, don't be... Look at those hyper extending elbows. Oh gosh, more bruises up here. These are from me wrestling with my dog. So please don't think that it's anything nefarious. <laughs> so I'm just going in. This is a Holbein Artist's Pencil in the shade Shell Pink. And if you see ones that look like this, they're whole bean. If you see ones that look like this, they are luminance. And then the odd one or two you might see that look like this are Prismacolor. They're the pencils that I will be using. And when we get to whoop, when we get to pastels, I'll show you the different brands I use as well. So here I'm just gonna this is like where I tend to deviate from my references the most. Because now I'll just like add in scribbles wherever I feel like they should go. <laughs> so here, like, because it was like big blobs of clouds, I just thought it'd be fun to like add in a bit of definition in the clouds themselves with different colors. I love this particular shade. It is apricot in the whole bean artist's color. And I think it's a really, it's especially for scenes like this, <laughs> that doesn't actually make any sense <laughs> where the moon is actually going over a cloud but you know this is not actually my neighbor's back garden this is my fantasy land where the moon can do whatever it wants like i just love how well it goes with all these other things and um, do, do, do. I feel like we need to pull in some of this nice colour. So with that, I'm doing it with the luminance in Genuine Cobalt Blue. Oh no, I'm such an idiot. I didn't mean to go over our moon. Will that rub out? Oh, it does rub out. Yay. <laughs> Success. I was really afraid I just messed up my entire point of the painting. Um... So yeah, for the clouds, I'm just drawing little bumps and then colouring in those bumps. We love getting technical here on this channel. Colouring in bumps. <laughs> Someday I'm going to be a professional <laughs> colouring in bump person. Um, okay, I think I'm pretty happy with the sky, but this is like my holy grail. 
this is the whole bean artist color pencil in soft white and the thing about this is that it really is soft it's really actually like soft you have to use a knife to sharpen it so it goes over everything really creamy and smooth and it's really it's a really lovely um pencil for like details so what i like to do with it is just to do like some lighter colored clouds in it and you can just do little dots of fun time and now you see these like trees here on the side um <clears throat> i'm going to go in with where is it i always get them confused because they look the same this is dark indigo in the luminance color pencil and it's a really nice one for adding in like trees and stuff so we're gonna go in and we're gonna do trees and this is <laughs> i don't think anybody's ever asked me how i draw trees but this is how i draw trees you just like draw lines and then do other lines coming out of it i i love drawing trees is it weird to say that it's like a meditative practice for me to draw trees i feel like any chance i get i will just draw them they're so easy to draw as well i find they're just really they're just really nice and calming or something something about just like the repetitive movement of drawing trees is something i really enjoy and okay we're gonna do one little one here as well so i just i say a pear but i know that's probably a bit of a country person word if i say pero which is not a real word perer is the real word but me and my culture accent it says pero but yeah I, sh I sharpened it uh, if you're wondering about my sharpener or pero it is green line i don't know it just says green line m and r that's what it says can you if i zoom in can you ever see that no we'll do it this way like an influencer yeah it's one of these ones it's pretty good but when I was in, oh, I can't open it. I got this really nice like metal one from Choose and Keeping in London last time I was there. And it was, it was a really nice metal one. But I like the like little ones that are pots because then I find I can just, you know, I don't have to like be over bin to pair it. Um, so we're going to just add in some contrast because I feel like there's only like two or three colors here. So we want to add in a little bit more visual interest. Uh, which will I go for? Let's see if this one shows up. It might be a bit too... Yeah, see this yellow rarely shows up well against the green. So we'll skip that yellow for now. Which one will we go for? This is a nice like greenish one. This is green ochre. This is a Prismacolor in, oh, this is also green ochre, but clearly a very different shade of green ochre. Why am I so drawn to green ochre? Okay, I think that might be our first piece of the live stream done. <laughs> okay, so let us get rid of that reference. Um, I'll go over all these at the end and I'll, I'll like zoom in on them all so you can see them close up. And then we're going to have a very satisfying paint peeling. Oh, so fun. Um, okay, reference number two, Electric Boogaloo, is this one. And I feel we're actually pretty good with our paint layers on this one. Whereas this one, you know, it needed a lot of bumps and squiggles for the clouds and it needed the trees and stuff. This one has... Like, you look at this, and you look at this, and you're like, they look vaguely similar, you know? They could actually be real things. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to scribble in some of these rocks and make them look even more rocky. Uh, this is Slate Grey from Luminance. And, yeah, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do some outlines. And maybe just some kind of cracks and crags and stuff i'm really just winging it with this one i'm gonna see if i can do it 
spot focus on this one because I find when I do um when I I'm like coloring in <laughs> that sounds like a sounds a bit like a cop out for what this actually is but when I'm like you know using pencils and going over like areas of paint with pencils my camera focuses more on what my hand is doing and less on the actual painting so I find I have to like get the camera to focus just on one spot but I'll have to remind myself to focus on the other spots once I move away from them so this is just yeah random we might do little bits of mm, is lichen how you pronounce it is it lichen or lichen but you know the little they're um what are they they're not just mosses and something else they're like i think it's like a collection of mosses and algae or algae and that's what makes lichen you know the little they look like paint splatters that you see on like old rocks like on mountains like this um but clearly they're not paint splatters who's <laughs> who's painting the mountain um I find even just like adding in like these little scribbles, like these are clearly rocks now. It's like the magic of adding pencils to pieces like this is really, it really shows up sometimes. Especially when you like, I feel like I have a vision what it's going to look like in my head because I have the reference images. But sometimes if I'm not using like a reference image particularly, it can be really unclear what I'm doing until like I add in the like pencil details and then all of a sudden it's like oh that's what you're drawing <laughs> I thought you were just scribbling okay so those are our rocks we'll add in some little highlights in certain areas again highly recommend Justin Donaldson's um tutorials he's king of rocks <laughs> he's so talented and so skilled sometimes i'm like hesitant to say talented because talent implies you just got it um but then skill is something you like work hard for you know although i'm not i'm never offended if anybody calls me talented don't worry like that's not me saying if you call me talented i hate you it's me saying i'm always afraid that i'll like insult someone else I'm personally not insulted by it, you know, it's just a, just in me thing, you know. Um, let's add in these. The colours of Connemara, which is where this image is taken, it are like absolutely just browns. 50 shades of brown and not at all kinky. Um... But it's such a wild, gorgeous area of the country. I love Connemara. This is like only like an hour and a half, an hour drive from me. And I really do not make enough use of how stunning of an area it is. I feel like every time I drive into it, it's like, I don't appreciate this nearly as much as I should. <laughs> you know, you really do not appreciate the areas that are so close to you, I find. Because you're so used to them. I'm so used to seeing all these like wild big mountains and then other I, other people visit Ireland and they're like oh, it's so stunning it's so beautiful and I'm like oh my god it is and I do not appreciate that nearly enough I have to laugh so like, people are always like oh my god you have little sheep on the road and it's so cute and I'm like oh I used to be late going to school sometimes when I was a child because they used to, like where we lived, there was like, it was just our house down like a road, down like a little laneway. And then there was a farmyard like behind the house. And sometimes the farmers would be moving cattle up that field or up our lane to like another field further along or something. And we would be stuck behind like tens of cattle on the road and we couldn't get to school until the cattle were done moving <clears throat> it's real um tell me you're from the country without telling me you're from the country <laughs> type thing <laughs> it's such a ridiculous reason to be late from school it's like those cows i couldn't <laughs> um i'll go to my browns and get a dark brown to 
darken up these areas here. Doop -a -doo. Here we go. This is Castle Earth by Luminance. And this is like my go-to super dark brown. The only thing is that it's texturally different from a lot of the other Luminance pencils. It's a lot more kind of grainy and inconsistent. Like when you draw like a line with it, it's not smooth. Let me see if I can have an example for you. I'll just go over to this page here and I'll just show you. I'll zoom you in as well. This is, oh no, hold on, focus cancel. I'll zoom you in so you can see. So we'll do a smooth one first. This is Payne's Grey, which is a really smooth color. See, super smooth. Then you have this one. Look at that. That's like not, it's not creamy at all. And like you can see all the little bits coming off of it. And then Payne's Grey is just like crayon. It's so deep. Whereas this one, it doesn't reach its potential, you know? <laughs> okay, let's zoom you back out after that deviation and we'll focus again on that um, so yeah that's my that's my beef with castle earth <laughs> drama in the Hannah Flanagan art community and it's got beef with a pencil <laughs> the fact that nobody's talking in chat just makes it seem like I'm here like doing all these quips to myself and there's just an audience of people just there standing silently watching me talk absolute dribble to myself. <laughs> it just makes it funnier nearly. <laughs> or maybe there's like a connection issue and um, there's loads of people talking in the chat and they're like, Hannah, please stop talking. We just want to see you make art and I can't see it for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why that is worse. <laughs> okay. I think we're nearing the end of this piece. I'm just going to add like kind of scribbles over the mountains. Oh, I didn't want to see my head there for a second. Gross. Mm, and then will we go to some light colors in the like lake as well? Just to give you a bit more pizzazz. And then we'll do some scribbles in the sky with the clouds. Nice. We get a little bit more scribbling. A little bit more scribbling in the sky. Here we go. And then it would not be me if I didn't add in little little doodles of colour. You know what actually? I think I want to add in some oil pastels. This is my favorite one. Keep talking, it's all fair as fun. Ah, thank you, Fred. <laughs> I'm so glad somebody said that. Because part of me was like, oh my God, they hate me. <laughs> um, this is a Sennelier. I, I, I never... 100% certain if I pronounce this correctly. Senelier Oil Pastel in the shade Royal Blue. And I'm actually going to go back into this piece and add in pops of Royal Blue because I just love it. I love it so much. It's like one of my absolute favourite oil pastel colours. And it just adds such nice, like, I don't know, there's, it's some, there's something about this particular colour that I really love. And I'm also going to go in with two of the Caran d'Ache Neo Pastels. So these aren't the Neo colors. These are actually Neo Pastels. And this darker one is in the shade Olive Yellow. And then this lighter one is in the shade Pale Yellow. So I'm gonna add in some whites here, just to pizzazz it up. And a little bit of this one as well. These add a great texture to pieces, I find. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> I'm so, so relieved, so relieved. I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, okay, there we go. Just little, little dots. 
where I find we could do with them. Ooh, this would actually be really good for what I was saying about the lichen or lichen, whichever is the correct pronunciation. I've only ever seen it written down. You know, when you only see certain words written down, you're like, I actually don't know how you say that in real life. Um, I'm always conscious of it. It happened to my partner once. I forget what he said one time. Oh yeah, he said he, he saw the word epitome and he was like epitome. And I was like, that's, I love you, but that's not how you say that word. And he was like, what? <laughs> it's, that's what epitome is when it's written down. I was like, yeah, it's not epitome. <laughs> um okay that's this one done i think this one is actually my favorite i was really uncertain when like i was starting out with it so i'm really really glad it's uh it's actually turned out okay and now we're gonna go on to reference number three which is our little cow friends so this is where i feel i feel like this one's going to get the most transformation because we're going to have some details on the walls here and a little bit more detail on the shed and then our cows are going to transform from vague blobs into perhaps recognizable creatures we'll see so these cows hmm i'm just looking at this one he if she i keep calling it a he you know some people are like oh some people will refer to like all dogs as he and all cats as she it's like i always refer to cows as he even though this is clearly like a female cow or a heifer and like you know her babies <laughs> and not a bull in the field <laughs> um sorry my phone's going off and i'm like who's this who's texting me um, okay we're gonna go in with this one and this is a prisma collar in the shade sepia and i'm gonna do my little focus on the cows here. So I'm gonna start in with the cow. So she's gonna get her ears. She, she is gonna get her ears. And she's gonna get her little head. And then we're gonna go down here. And she's gonna get her cute nose. I love cows' noses. They're so cute. Sorry. The depth in the top right is great. <gasps> Thank you! I'm so glad. I just, <laughs> I'm doing good paintings on live. You know, I was I was really afraid that like I would do these paintings and sometimes I obviously do paintings and they've turned they turn out absolutely terrible. And I was really afraid today would be one of those days where I do terrible paintings. Sorry, that was that was a neo color like two pastel but I cannot tell you what shade it was because it's um broken and the paper's gone off of it <laughs> so I'm sorry it's like a orangey color that was just to add in the little tags on her ears um so let's add in her eyes oh she looks a bit angry we'll make her look less angry she looks kind of more like a bear than she does a cow but you know this is all this is all just part of the process. We'll try and lighten her up a little bit and add in maybe some cow like features here. There we go. Bears don't have those little tri and then she got her kind of she she has a bit of a saggy neck. But we won't we won't embarrass her by saying she has a saggy neck, you know. We're all about the positivity with the cows here you know she's just had babies so she can't be feeling very nice in herself um and then her leg oh oh my god i messed up her leg i'm sorry we've probably just given her some sort of grievous injury by doing that to her but you know there we go Thank God I covered her legs with the bushes because <laughs> we probably just really mangled her. <laughs> I think this is actually mud that she's covered in in the picture. Because um, in case you don't know, we get a hell of a lot of rain here. Uh, next, we're going to draw her babies. Let's hope we don't also mangle her babies um, by drawing them with some 
non-functional legs. We're going to give her babies an ear here. Now we're going to give this one another ear. And again, the cute little nose. Ugh, absolutely adorable. God, I love their little noses. And there we go. Okay, that one's little face. Oh, stop, so cute. Um, it actually looks a wee bit more like a lamb than it does a cow, but we're gonna try and rectify that. We probably won't. It'll probably still look like a lamb, but let's hope that we can infer from the context that it um, is standing beside other cows that it's not a lamb. There we go. Little, little baby, little baby. We'll add in some shading here and then we're gonna go in with lighter. I'm probably just gonna go straight in with white to try and add some little bit of depth to the camera. There we go. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go in with Payne's gray here because I feel like her eyes are just not popping. There's a little bit more pop in them now. Uh, okay, we go back to her brown and then we'll do, we're gonna call this, this one's a boy. We're, we're saying that this one is a boy. This is ma. This is a mama cow, and this is uh, her little daughter, and then this is her little brother. Okay, that's what we're assigning these cows. I know this guy has a. I was gonna say, I was gonna say a cuter nose, a lighter colored nose, but we're. Um, I'm not. I don't feel like it's gonna show up as good, especially because these paintings are like quite small, so. We're not gonna. I'm also probably not too bothered doing the tags on their ears either. I mean, in this fantasy land, the cows don't need to be tagged. We'll say that. There we go. Cute. There we go. Oh, I'm so cute. Um, and then we're gonna go in with this kind of like pinky shade. And add a little bit of highlight here. We'll tie them all together. We'll add some pinky shades into this one as well. Okay, those are our slightly less wonky cows. Nice. And for the walls, the walls are next. I, you know, it's the one thing I resent about living in West of Ireland is that these walls are everywhere and I can't avoid drawing them. But I hate having to color them in. I'm going to use a medley of varying shades of brown and just do loads of little scribbles and dots and stuff on this to try and mimic the fact that it's like a stone wall. So bear with me while I do the worst job ever at trying to make this look like a stone wall. I hate doing stone walls. When I painted that, um, my last video that I put up painting home, uh, Oh, painting all the stones on our old house. I was like, ah, I love stone houses. I love stone walls, but I hate drawing them and painting them and trying to make them not look stupid. Um, but yeah, they're very, uh, apparently they're like a cultural feature of the West of Ireland specifically, and you can get grants to help you maintain them, which I had no idea about. I thought it was just up to you know everyone to maintain them they're not like when you see the walls like that there's no like grout or anything in between them they're just stacked so um we have stone walls in our garden and sometimes uh, if there's like too much pressure on like one of them or something like that they'll uh, tumble over or like during a storm some of them might tumble over it just really just depends um so you have to like kind of stack them back up again it's like an old skill that I obviously don't have. Well, <laughs> I did try stacking of the one in our garden when it toppled over. And uh, I didn't do a bad job of it, but uh, I definitely would not call myself anything close to uh, 
an expert in the stacking of stones. But yeah, there's some there's some facts for you now about stone walls. God, I am so so riveting, am I? <laughs> okay, let's see. Now I'm really just trying to give the impression as opposed to an accurate depiction of the stone wall. I think there's a little bit of a not delay but it's telling me that my connection's a little bit bad again so sorry if there's spotty connections. I feel like I need to force myself to <laughs> Oh it's like how you can come and you can practice on my stone walls, Lynn, if you want to. <laughs> I can give you all I can give you all of my walls. I oh, know, in turn I'll give you a painting <laughs> if you want to fix them up whenever they topple down. Um I yeah, I'm not I, I think I prefer make, I think I prefer like stacking the stones as opposed to painting them as well. They're like, oh, it's so boring painting stone walls. <laughs> Not to say mean. I know, I think my cousin, or maybe, I think my cousin was like a professional Stone mason? No, not stone mason. Dry stone walling is what you call it, Lynn. So I'm going to assume that's the correct term for it as opposed to my very limited knowledge on the actual proper terms for these things. I didn't even know it had a name. That's how I am. Culturally inept I am at my own culture. <laughs> I'm going to add in, there's a wee telephone pole here. So we're going to, or presumably telephone or electricity pole. I'm going to add it in because I think it's I think it looks nice. There we go. Yeah, it's starting to look a little bit less blobby and a little bit more something something. Hi Betsy. I'm so glad you joined. So we're going to just go in with scribbles here for the grass. Loads of scribbles for the grass. That's like my favourite scribbly grasses. feel like this isn't so interesting when I just do scribbles but like it's just to add a bit of sort of variety in the actual like grassy areas because if I was just doing I think I said this in my painting video as well is that like if I were to just do one color for the grasses it would look really boring so that's why like I love doing like just a load of different sort of like shades and that way you can still tell that it's grass but it has a bit more interest in it just basically so now we're going to go into here like the foreground and loads of scribbles again for the foreground um i might also just pretend there's like a little bush and we might make this into like branches this is again where i was saying like where i deviate from the actual reference image quite a lot is when like I add in all these like different colors and textures and stuff and I think that's like it makes it more fun and interesting as well mm. I should pull in some we'll do another tree here it's so fun just like when you get to this stage of a painting and you just you just go loose and you're just like, oh yeah, we'll have some fun. We'll just do some things. Now, one thing I feel like we're lacking here is a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to go in with that dark indigo again. And I'm going to add more of this. And then we're going to go back up here to the top. And although I feel like these trees are kind of fine and they don't need much details, it would look a bit odd compared with the rest of it if they didn't 
Have fish DTM. Um, and then we'll go here with this one. Um, we'll do some with this one. Basically, how I pick the colors for like these kind of foliage and stuff like that is just it's based on contrast and cool and warm tones, essentially. Okay, I think no, you no. Know we're also gonna do. We're gonna go in with. This is Neo Color in lime green. Again, we're gonna go over and just add in a bit of texture and fun. And this is a yellow, olive yellow, sorry again. I don't like the foreground actually in the end. That's what I get for trying to be fun and do different things. I don't like how this turned out here. Sorry about the state of my hands. Look, I'm absolutely... It's all just paint and I took the dog on a walk right before this as well. So I'll never be a hand model. My dreams of being a hand model thwarted. Um, not actually, in case, you, in case you're going to offer me any hand model. Pity contracts. I don't want to be a hand model. Um, okay, that's this one done. We'll say this is one that's done now. Oh, my camera's only on 15%. Will we have enough to finish this stream on my camera? <gasps> Spooky. Oh no, wrong reference. Hold on. Reference number four. I feel like this one won't take a huge amount of time because we're not going to be trying to actually make things look like real things. This is just going to be fun. Trees. Colours. So, in this one we're going to go in and we're going to do scribblies everywhere. And you know what, for this one I'm going to try and keep the scribblies like um, horizontal because of the way the water is. So it's like really giving the impression that it is actually reflections on the water. And we'll go in with more of this one. We're a bit too similar. We'll switch to maybe one like you. And then we'll go for like a darker green shade. And then I quite like the idea of like a pink in here as well. Because I feel like this was taken slightly around autumn. So it'd be nice to have sort of like little shades of pink. And then for, um, we'll do these trees down here first. Or these trees here first, I mean. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do loads of little branches. I feel like this is a race against time against my camera battery now. And it's like, ah. Um, okay, so... Gonna just do loads of nice big trees because you can see vaguely like the branches of things there, so that's what I'm basing all this off. Again, she back at it again with the trees. I am. Um, I used to paint a load of or draw a load of clouds and power lines. And my partner jokes that that's all I draw, even though it's, it's not. Don't look, don't, don't look at the clouds and the power lines. I've been outed. But yeah, he jokes that that's all I am, um, all I paint. It's like, wow, clouds and power lines. You're really, you're really getting out of your comfort zone. <laughs> all in jest, though. He's a very nice man. We won't tolerate slander against my Noel. It's funny, um, this is embarrassing, although it's not my fault who I fell in love with, but uh, my dad's name is also Noel, so they're both called Noel, which is weird. And then we joke that when we get married, he's going to take my surname, so then he'll have the exact same name as my father, and there'll be two Noel Flanagans. <laughs> it's like, imagine, <laughs> it'll be so weird. <laughs> Don't worry, um, 
I am keeping my name because I don't really like his surname. That's the main reason why I just think it's, I just prefer my own surname. Not that I don't like his surname, but I like his family and all that stuff, but I just prefer my own surname. So that's why we're keeping it. I feel bad that I don't have any more, um, like, feminist reason. I mean, part of it is, I suppose, a bit feminist, but uh, yeah, I just prefer my own surname. Okay, I think we're gonna add in little, I'm gonna go in with this one, little cloudy bits. Hi, Cheryl, North Carolina, oh my gosh. So far away, I'm so flattered. We had someone here from Russia to go on as well. It's like, oh my God, so many people like me and my silly paintings. <laughs> um, What time is it in North Carolina? Is it like, I don't know. Early morning, late night. I um, time zones. Me and time zones are not too good with them. <laughs> um, so I'm going to what I'm planning to do for this area, which is these like leaves and stuff, is that we'll start with a really dark color, and then we'll probably taper it out, let it fade out a little bit towards the towards here. And then we'll do the same with the reflection, but I gotta stick to my, what I said, and do it just like this to make sure, you know, it still looks like a reflection. So we've done that there and now I'm probably going to go in with lighter greens here as well to really make these just have a bit more depth to them, if that makes sense. And I also want to go in with some yellows because I just, I can't be having greens without having yellows. It's just not, it's not right. It's, it's not right, everyone. <laughs> Sacrilege greens without yellows. So now I'm going to go back in with this dark indigo again. Dark indigo is like what I use as a black nearly. Um, and I'm going to, oh my gosh, I leaned way too hard on that. Our first casualty of the live stream. Okay, here we go. Okay, seems fairly secure. <laughs> and we're gonna just do, we'll do little branches coming down like this, so you can really see. And that's like what I do to basically just sort of simplify what I think when you're working off references it can be really easy to get overwhelmed with the piece and I think the best thing to do is to break it down and simplify it because you would like look at this area up here and you see all of those leaves and all those branches and you'd be like oh my god that's like so intense there's so many leaves for me to draw and do I have to draw every single individual branch but then if you just break it down to little kind of like manageable blobs you're like Ah, oh, that makes sense. I can just do blobs and then do little branches on them. And then we're going to do the same here in the reflection. But like less detailed. And then I think for final touches on this one, we'll just do some little kind of specks of white, sort of. to really add little brightening details and maybe kind of to highlight that this is like the actual shoreline so you can see like where there's a break and where where reality sort of begins <laughs> okay oh i think we're done i'm gonna take all my pencils and just dump them to the side for now and then we will Way all pencils. Sorry if that's all super loud. Blech. Okay, I'm going to. We're gonna have some nice paint peeling moments here now. Or not paint peeling, imagine. <laughs> Peel off the entire thing. Uh, okay. Oh, are you ready? Satisfying. I feel like when I do this, 
they go from looking like messy sketches to suddenly looking like clean finished pieces it's really crazy how just the addition of a border really changes it and this is what i was saying about using cheap the cheapest like washi tape that you can get um if you're comfortable buying it off amazon that's where i get it from i just buy packs of washi tape off amazon that i'd like the look of as well this one has like moons and stars on it and um it doesn't like cheap washi tape doesn't stick very well so i find the cheaper lower quality washi tapes function as like you know painter's tape really well just for that reason alone so yeah that's like one art material that it's better if it's lower quality i suppose it's not really an art material is it? but i don't mean the designs are low quality obviously i mean just the actual stickiness see like that ripped there but it only ripped itself it didn't even rip the paper and the final peel could have squealed way louder there but i won't so that is it these are our, oh, our finished pieces how exciting is that ah, our first live stream with our first finished pieces <laughs> hold on okay i will bring up our references and i'll zoom in one by one on each of our final pieces okay hold on I'll zoom you right a bit as well whoa whoa here we go Reference one, image one. Sorry, my page is a bit warped and stuff, so it's a bit crooked, but yeah. The view from my garden in the morning time versus the final piece of it. Um, I think this, this one's okay. I feel like it's slightly messier. I think I could have done a better job of it. I'm so glad you enjoyed that, Lynn. I'm really, really glad that like people are enjoying this live stream. I'm, I was so paranoid. I, <laughs> everyone would hate it <laughs> um okay so that is our first piece with our first reference so we'll go to piece number two and reference number two i think this is my favorite one by far i i really i really think this is a good one um oh sorry um i'm after moving my actual thing there i think this is my favorite one i really I like the shadows, I like the rocks, I like the actual composition. Yeah, this is my favourite one, I think, for sure. And we'll do number three. As we say now, if we're a doe, or no, if we're a tree, <laughs> sorry, if we're a doe is number two. And this is my least favourite, I think. I don't like how these turned out. My cows look wonky, the stone walls aren't good. Nah, I don't like this one. And there's too much similar colours, it's not very fun, I don't know. I much prefer the original photo I took versus the actual thing. But maybe this is your favourite one. And if it is, you're valid for that. <laughs> and then we got this one, which is number four. And I really, I do like this one as well, actually. I think this one turned out really nice. I like how I did the water and I like the mix of the pinks versus the greens they all go quite well together I like how I managed to break down rather complicated things like those leaves into more simplified versions of them and I like the way you can tell that this is a reflection of that because I know in the actual picture it's very much like a mirror um but I I think if I was to do it exactly mirrored in the actual painting it wouldn't have worked out as well so I'm glad I just kind of went for the colors as opposed to like doing it realistically so yes i'm so sorry you missed it molly i think i think this is it should be available for, for yeah it should be available for playback if it's not i'm going to be so mad at myself but it should be i think youtube does it automatically i sure hope youtube does it automatically i'll be mad if it doesn't <laughs> but yes that was my first live stream everyone just about two hours long okay not the worst that could have definitely gone on longer if I had tried to like be really realistic about it. So that was me creating four images from four reference pieces. I really, really, I was so grateful for everyone who showed up and came here. Oh, yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for listening to me ramble about absolutely everything under the sun as well. And, um, yeah, I I really appreciate you all for showing up and 
everything and I hope if you if you did paint along or if you are going to paint any paintings from the references again they're on my patreon for free and uh, tag me in what you paint from the references and if you do a better job of this one and this one please do let me know <laughs> I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and take it easy never stop painting I love you all so much and I will see you. Bye.